Jeannie. Oh, good morning, Master. Your breakfast is almost ready. Uh, never mind about the breakfast. Uh, who were you talking to? No one. No, I heard you. I heard you. You you know what's going to happen to me if anybody catches you here. Now, who, who were you talking to? My Aunt Fatima. She's been visiting me here all week. Oh. Uh, oh, but do not worry. She's returning home today. How could your Aunt Fatima be here all week? I haven't seen her. Well, I, I know. I did not want her to disturb you, Master. Aunt Fatima's a lovely woman, but she never stops talking. Yeah. Well, at least I could have said goodbye to her before she left. Oh, she has not left yet. Would you like to say goodbye? Sure. Any friend of yours is a friend of mine. Where is she? Master, this is Aunt Fatima. Aunt Fatima, Captain Nelson. <laughs> Come down here. <laughs> Come up here. <laughs> Take these trunks off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, if what if somebody looked over the wall? Oh, that's when you worry too much. This patio's private. Not anymore, is it? This is Custer's. Now you've got to get out of here. stage malfunction. Well, it happens to us down at the Cape occasionally. What went wrong? Fuel trouble. I guess I didn't mix enough vinegar with the baking soda. Well, you can try another space probe tomorrow, huh? Gee, I wish I was a real astronaut like you. They send up monkeys and mice, but I don't see what they've got against kids. <laughs> That's for me. I gotta go do my homework. Sounds like Reveille. It was, but it's the only bugle call Mom knows how to play. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Junie, I don't mind you levitating. As a matter of fact, I like it myself, but not out here. But the sun is out here, Master. <laughs> is this not more pleasant? Mm, well, I guess you could consider it part of the space program. <laughs> Has anyone seen my nose? Would you like to float a while? Uh, no, no, not again. We were seen the last time. But does it matter? Does it matter? Well, how am I going to explain it to that kid? And you, you know he's going to ask. I just hope he hasn't. Ah, gee, gee. <laughs> gee. Hello, Major Jamerson. I, I, I wasn't expecting anybody. As a matter of fact, I was just going to bed. That settled it, Locke. Oh, well, I'm sorry to bother you, Captain, but we need your help. Yeah, well, what can I do for you, sir? You can help me straighten out my son. It's just that Custer's imagination runs away with him. It wasn't my imagination. Weren't you and that lady floating in the air? Tell them. See what I mean? Talk to him. 
Hi there, Custer. <laughs> Say, you probably know more about space mechanics than any boy your age. So you, of all people, should realize that ordinary people just can't float in the air. But I saw you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, if you can tell me how, under normal circumstances, a person can float in the air, <laughs> uh, I, I'd be willing to admit it. There's someone in the kitchen. I, uh, I'm uh, sorry we intruded, Captain Nelson. <laughs> you didn't. Not at all, sir. <laughs> Didn't you hear that? Yeah, let's get home, dear. We've taken up enough of Captain Nelson's time. Oh, boy, grown up sure of bad ears. You sounded like a girl giggling. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll thank Captain Nelson for explaining everything to you. But he didn't. Uh, well, well, he did to my satisfaction. You all understand when you're old enough. Come on. Good night, Captain. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, if I can help again, not at all. These you're gonna go too far. Oh, have no fear, Master. I will always come back. <laughs> no. Gee, come on, I've got to study. Oh, but why, Master? When you take your test, I can be a little voice whispering in your ear. Uh, like this. Oh, now, Jeannie, I'm going to do this on my own, please. Besides, what do you know about celestial navigation? Oh, I learned a few things in my day from Galileo. No, yeah, I had a feeling he didn't spend all his time gazing at the stars. <laughs> Truly, some days it does not pay to get out of the bottle. <laughs> In smoke. Let's go back and see Captain Nelson. I gotta find out how he does it. Custer. I know. I'm restricted to barracks. <laughs> see, I simply cannot cope with him any longer. We need professional help for your son. My son? You're the one ordered me to have a boy. <laughs> Not this one. <laughs> isn't normal for a kid to keep on fabricating these stories. Major, I appreciate your problem, but there just aren't enough hours in the day of an Air Force psychiatrist as it is. And frankly, who's to say what's normal when it comes to kids? I'm sure it's merely a phase he's going through. Well, I wish he'd go through it without stopping on the way to see Tony Nelson float in the air. Captain Tony Nelson? Yes, Custer's always hang around him. Why, he worships the ground that astronaut lifts off from. <laughs> of course, if you're too busy. I'm never too busy to reach down and take a little boy by the hand, to guide those stumbling little feet on the path to manhood, to make him open up his little psyche and say, ah. It's <laughs> right outside. Bring him in. Custer? Come in, Custer. I'm Dr. Bellows. I, uh, just want you to make yourself comfortable. Now, Custer, tell me exactly what happened in your own words. Just begin at the beginning. Oh, for heaven's sakes, how can you hear without what you might call it in your ears? <laughs> ah, Custer, Custer, you? All right, son. How, uh, how about lying down on the couch? I'm not tired. Well, I, uh, I just want you to be comfortable while you talk to me. I'm comfortable here. Custer to Earth! I've just completed one million orbits! Now, Custer, no more orbits. They make me dizzy. What other games have you got? <laughs> Let's talk about the game when you saw Captain Nelson float in the air. That wasn't a game, that was real! I think I'm some sort of schizophrenic. It must be a secret trick the astronauts have learned. You might have experienced a weightlessness reaction from a simulated flight. He must have taught the girl the trick, then. Girl? What girl? The one he made disappear in a puff of smoke. Boy, I wish I could do that. Now you know that's impossible. <laughs> Custer? I believe you. You do? Honest? Yes. I'm your friend, Custer. And I'm also Captain Nelson's friend. 
Anything he does concerns me because it concerns the space program. Do you understand? Uh-huh. You and I are going to try to help Captain Nelson. It'll be our secret. Gee, what do you want me to do? I want you to keep your eyes open, and I want you to report to me anything you see that's out of the ordinary. I'll do the rest. Okay. Dr. Bellows? Yes, Custer? Do head shrinkers give lollipops? <laughs> Dancing they do nowadays? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's like our harem dancing. <laughs> yeah, only with more clothes on. What are you doing here? I was on a reconnaissance flight. Yeah. Well, uh, purely in the interest of the space program, anything peculiar going on? She's done it again. She disappeared. Are you sure she was there? Uh-huh. Really grabs you, huh? <laughs> What's going on here? Shh. You'll hear us. <laughs> well, it's been years since I've left me a peeping Tom. I think I hear my mom's bugle. <laughs> Officer, you're making a mistake. I'm a psychiatrist. Same thing. Well, it's the first time I've seen a peeping Tom giving on the job training. <laughs> Officer, if you'll just ring the bell, Captain Nelson will vouch for us. Don't worry. I'll do that little thing. Just stay where you are, wherever that is. <laughs> yes? Sorry to bother you, Captain Nelson. Caught these two looking in your window. You didn't. <laughs> Please tell them who I am. Do you know him? Yes, officer. I, I know this man. I must admit, I'm shocked by this kind of behavior. Well, if you know him, I guess it's okay. I wouldn't go around looking in people's windows after this if I were you. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. Anything for you, Captain Nelson. Right. You may have been wondering why we were looking in your window. But I'm going to get right to the point, Captain Nelson. There's some things going on around here that scream for an explanation. Oh, yes, sir? Yes. I have an eyewitness here who says that he saw you dancing a few moments ago with a girl who seems to have vanished. Yes, yes, she seems to have vanished. Custer? Shouldn't you be in bed? My Captain Nelson. She was a beautiful blonde with long hair. A blonde? Did you see a blonde? No. Oh, of course not. I hate blondes. Tell me, Captain, are there some experiments with weightlessness going on at the base that I haven't been informed about? He's doing it again. He got the pillows. Doing what, Custer? Just this high off the floor. <laughs> Uh, is your mother's bugle broken, Custer? Well, come on, Captain. Do it again. Can you go up in the air anytime you want? Oh, don't be ridiculous. No. There he goes again, Doctor. Custer. 
Tomorrow, we're going to have your eyes checked. Uh, we'll be running along now. I'm sorry to bother you, Captain. Any time, Dr. Bellows. I wish you'd teach me how to float like that. <laughs> there he goes again! Come on, Custer. You'll feel much better when we get those glasses fitted. Here we are. All right, Jenny, put me down. Thanks. <laughs> Don't play those little tricks, please. <laughs> what tricks? Thou well, art so nervous. It's just that, just that every time I turn around, I expect Custer to pop out. Well, I can take care of that. I will not have you tormented. Well, I'm not so crazy about it myself. Dr. Bellows thinks I'm coming apart of the seams as it is. <laughs> if you see any loose threads hanging off me, don't pull. <laughs> oh, Master, I'm so pleased. Pleased? Yes, because now you need me and I can help you. Oh, I can offer you many solutions to this problem. Well, all I need is one. Oh, it is a simple matter. I can turn him into a fr You'll turn him into nothing. An excellent idea. No, no, I, I mean, leave him alone. But I... No buts, no buts. I'll handle this my way, you hear? Oh, but master... Ah, 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 ah. Yes, master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nelson here. Oh, hello, Mr. Jameson. Yeah? No, no. Custer hasn't been around here all day. <laughs> well, you know how boys are. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. If I see him, I'll give you a ring. Okay, okay, bye. Custis disappeared. Custis disappeared. Custis disappeared! Custis disappeared! Jenny! Jenny! You come out of there. Oh. Yes, Master. Don't you yes, Master me. What have you done with Custer? I have not done anything with Custer. Don't give me that. He's been missing since early morning. Well, I do not have him. I didn't say you had him. I asked what you'd done with him. You are yelling at me. You haven't heard me yell yet. You were going to turn him into nothing, remember? Well, I did not do that. Custer will turn up. <laughs> yeah, but what as? A uh, polywog or a parakeet or something really sensational like a rutabaga? You do not believe me. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A little kid like that who never did you any harm. Jeannie, come back. Bring Custer back. This is your master calling. <laughs> I'm sure he's all right, honey. After all, no rockets left for Mars today. Oh! I, I was only fooling, dear. Honestly. Here, Nancy, take this. No, no. Oh, thanks for coming over, Doctor. You, you've been a great comfort. That 
could be some news. Oh, Custer, Custer, darling. Is he back yet? Oh. Uh, is there... Is there anything new in the house? What? Uh, well, hello, Dr. Bellows. I mean, since, since Custer left, uh, have you noticed anything that uh, wasn't here before? That's new. Huh? Where'd it come from? I found it in Custer's room this morning. On his bed. Next to his pajamas. Water it every day. He's a growing boy. There's a new goldfish. Does that count? Does it count? <laughs> Which one? Which one? Uh, uh, it's, it's the one with the brown eyes. Huh? Oh, Custer? Custer? Captain, I know how upset you must be over Custer. Sir, I have a confession to make. Tell me, Captain. Unburden yourself. This is all my fault. I can't, keep, I can't keep it a secret any longer. Your fault? This letter will finish me, but I've got to tell you. Yes, yes. I know what happened to Custer. You see, I have this friend, and she's got the Custer with... Custer, darling, where have you been? There's this traveling carnival at the edge of town, and they've got the neatest centrifuge ride. I didn't think you'd mind. You've been at the carnival all day? I was going to call you up and tell you where I was, only then I wouldn't have had enough money left for popcorn. And hey, Captain Nelson, I know how you do that floating trick. Huh? Oh, what do you mean? I saw a lady at the carnival do the exact same thing. She even disappeared in a puff of smoke. What, what'd she look like, huh? What'd she look like? Big fat lady with dark hair. Oh. oh, I'm so relieved. Captain Nelson, let's have a cup of coffee and some coffee cake. No, I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Jameson. I'm going to find somebody and, uh, and apologize to her. How about that confession you're going to make? Uh, yeah, well, how about that? <laughs> now, Custer, my boy, let's start at the beginning and go over everything you saw. Very carefully. Jeannie? <laughs> Look, how wrong can a fellow be? I, I hope you'll forgive me, but I, I won't blame you if you don't. Jeannie? <laughs> Jeannie? can a fella be? I won't blame you if you don't forgive me. I hope you will. Never. Do not bother me. I am choosing a new planet. I will not stay where I am not wanted. Who said that? Huh? Who, who said that? Who said you weren't wanted? I will find a master up there who does not hate blondes. Jeannie, I didn't mean that. Uh, you know, we have a custom on this planet. Call kiss and make up. I would know more of this custom. I'm truly sorry. I'll never accuse you of anything like that again. You promise? I promise. <laughs> 